Welcome to another edition of Locker Room Access Hanging with the Who. We're coming to you from Renewal Restaurant on Main Street. I'm your host, Mark Jerome. Today, I have a great guest joining us, Coach Johnny Carpenter. Are the fans going to be spoiled from last year? I mean, I think we've, in a way, the reign of Coach Bennett right now over the past 11 seasons going into his 11th year, I think that's right. I've been here for a lot of them, so they just kind of um, get mixed together. But I think Dave Kane said it last spring after when the ACC is the golden age of Virginia basketball. We're, we have such a historic his program, such a just prestigious program, lots of a couple of Final Fours, amazing players. Ralph Sampson, I know the, the younger crowd doesn't really know how dominant he was, but three-time National Player of the Year, you Terry Holland, phenomenal coach, Coach Bennett. I mean, we are kind of in a golden age in terms of regular season wins. I saw the two-year stretch we've had last year was the best since 97 or 98, something like that. I mean, that's such a long time when you think about it. Like The number of amazing teams, amazing players, but 66 and 6, if that's right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it's hard to not get spoiled in a way, but it's amazing to see how with each year, the guys still remain humble. They still remain true to the pillars, that grit. And you guys saw it the past two games. I mean, what gritty defensive performances. Yeah. yeah. Right. And while the defense has been really good, the offense has struggled at times, only shooting 16% from a three. Mm -hmm. Does that have something to do with the three-point line being pushed back a little bit? Mm -hmm. Does that have something to do with new guys on the team? Uh, I mean, I don't know how many people, there's very few people in the world, in the country, that can shoot like Kyle Guy did, right? Yeah. Yeah, shoot, we had Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, and DeAndre Hunter last year shooting from three. So we'll talk about how lucky we were last year. Um, three NBA guys, I think we were eighth in the country in three-point shooting, um, which was, I think, was one of the highest years we had. So Ty was right at 39.9 or right at 40%, and the other, those other guys were in the 40s too. And the volume that Ty shot those threes at, that's an amazing clip, so... Obviously, those guys leaving early on, there's always chemistry. But I do think, as we were talking about earlier, the three-point percentage nationally has actually decreased. Once again, it's early. They've extended the line. It's down 2%, smaller sample size compared to the end of last year. So there will be an adjustment. Um, but it's also good, too, because we've been holding teams to 4 25, I think, two straight nights. Um, so I'll take it. Yeah, NIT in New York last year, it was 35 percent, and this mm -hmm. year was 33 percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do we fix the shooting percentage this year? Yeah, I think as guys get more comfortable with each other, the chemistry will in help the percentage increase, and also too, it's just adjusting to that line. The line's kind of arbitrary when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Of I've been reading this book called Sprawl Ball, phenomenal book on numbers and analytics, and it's talking about kind of how the three-point line is just this line on the ground in front of it, one foot in front of the three-point line, I think the NBA average over 20 years is 38%. One foot behind that line is one percentage lower over all those years, but it's worth half as many points. So it's like one of those things where we just have to kind of find a way to adjust to the line, figure out which shots are worth taking. Um, one small detail is now that the corner three, there's actually a bend in the corner three as opposed to last year. So last year people were saying, oh, the corner three is the best shot. Well, in the NBA it is because it was actually closer. This year in college it's actually closer. So kind of teams are going to probably start drifting towards corner threes more. And I think we have to find ways of in practice helping guys get a higher arc with the different technologies we have. Um, we got to find ways of extending their range, shooting deeper threes just so that they're comfortable. If they can shoot from far away, well, then they'll be able to shoot up close. That line will shrink in their head. So it's kind of a mix of player development, find ways to eliminate short misses because if they're used to shooting a little bit closer, their shot's probably going to miss short as they move back. So we got to find ways to incentivize long shots, long misses. It's okay if a shot's a missed shot as long as it's a quality miss. Um, so we're more very process-oriented. We just have to find constructive ways, and that's just on us as a staff to put guys in better positions to score those threes. So, yeah. Do you watch other ACC teams play? I have. When you're not, when you're not watching UVA play? Yeah, so it's a mix between opponent scouting and especially this year when, with the ACC opening up, playing each other. 
we've been able to kind of see different games, and we start with UNC, so we're getting ready for that scout as well. So it's one of those things where we're able to watch other teams play too, and it seems as a whole nationally there are teams that have been draining threes or players get hot some games, but as a whole it seems like the three-point percentage is just coming down. I watched Florida State play Florida yesterday. Oh, what a grinder. That was awesome. Florida State's defense looked good. Yeah, they looked great. That was awesome. They beat Florida. Gave it, get the business to Florida on Florida's home court. Mm-hmm. Florida ranked number six in the country. Yeah. And it looked like the other way around. Yeah. Like Florida State was six and Florida wasn't ranked. Yeah. Do you anticipate teams playing a little more zone this year against you guys? Do you anticipate teams like doing some kind of scramble defense like Florida's? They, they look like they were mm-hmm. switching with screens. They look like they were playing match up zone. I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to just get back into it because Florida State just jumped out to an early lead and then because of some of the scrambling and over rotations, Florida State ended up getting more open threes and extend the lead even farther. I think, in theory, it makes sense force teams to shoot outside shots. So the best way to do that is with a zone um, or a pack-like system. You know, it's almost you know similar forcing teams to shoot outside shots. And now that the line's farther out, the teams that are probably going to benefit the most are the teams like the pack line teams or zone teams, Syracuse, UVA. That was. Not the prettiest offensive game, but both teams held each other to such a few point total. So I wouldn't be surprised if more and more teams either go to a pack-like man-to-man or a 2-3 or 3-2 extended zone uh, just to force outside shots. 1-3-1, one, one, I'm not sure as much because you might get pressure on the inside. But yeah. I watched Maryland play Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that game one. Yeah, was, Rhode Island was, was up by the Maryland 1-3-1. Kane stormed that. Yeah. I was a little surprised that Rhode Island couldn't figure out how to put somebody in the, in the middle against that 1-3-1. But it looked like Maryland's defense was taking a page out of, out of Tony Bennett's book, how they played the pick and roll, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Impacting. I remember them doing that last yeah. year. Yeah. Impacting and hard hedging is big. Um, it seems like a lot of teams are also taking kind of the block or mover concept. Yeah. Another interesting thing, too, is that a lot of teams, some of the higher teams, ranked in terms of Ken Palm, nationally ranked, they're actually kind of slowing down the number of possessions. All the people talking about pace and slow style of play. In all reality, we're talking about three seconds separating last to, like, middle of the pack or even top 100. So from 355 to top 100, it's only separated by three seconds in terms of pace, right? But more and more teams are actually kind of in that bottom 170 to 300 in terms of the top team. So it's interesting. I don't know if that has to do with three-point line or if it's just the new style of play, but it seems like teams are realizing, like, we have to make the most of each possession, not just waste possessions, and that's slowing down the clock a bit. So. And while we didn't shoot the ball well, that's going to be a concern moving forward, was there anything that you were really happy about last night? Yeah, I think our defense the past few games, obviously, I, 34 points, back-to-back games. I saw something that said lowest point total allowed since 1944 or something. It's for against Syracuse, since yeah. 1945. Yeah. Uh, un- unreal. Um, but I think just how this team pressures the ball, how we cover for each other, has been really impressive to me. And I think defensively, seeing guys take major leaps defensively, like Cody Statman defensively, has significantly improved. Um, to the point where he's a, looks like a very good on-ball defender for us. So he's been putting in the work. And just, I love the unity of this group. They've got like a toughness and edge about them defensively. And offense will come. We've had to play two predominantly zone teams, which is kind of hard to start the year. Most teams, when you're preparing your offense in the summer, you're preparing for your man-to-man offense. But we've had to open up with two predominantly zone teams. So I think once we get into a better rhythm with our man-to-man, Unless more and more teams, like you said, start playing zone, I think all those numbers will start increasing. Yeah. I saw something last night that I haven't seen in a couple of years since I've been here and since he's been here. Jay Huff defeated the pick and roll mm-hmm. twice. Yeah. Did it really well. Jay. One time, I think, to the steal where oh, he yeah. came down. Oh, I thought court. he was in a thunder dunk. <laughs> We've seen him do some amazing things, like take off on the free throw line. I know that dunk went viral a couple of years ago. No warm up, he took off. I think Kyle or Ty may have filmed it and posted it, but he has improved so much and has been working so hard, especially with in terms of hard hedging, um, the pick and roll, and recovering quickly. We're so, as you know, so detailed, so specific about all the little nuances of the defense, and he's been doing such a great job with that. It seems like more teams, even NBA teams, are starting to kind of 
hard hedge or at least extend more so than switch as a primary coverage. So it's been nice to see. How much influence will you have when it comes to decision making? Like, oh, we should go with this, we should go with that play, we should defend this way. This guy goes right, this guy doesn't go left with the recruiting, well, sorry, with the, with the scouting. Yeah. When it comes time to have a say, what, what Bennett's decision might be. Yeah, I think Coach Bennett is one of the best leaders in terms of the man's brilliant, offensively, defensively. He thinks the game in an unbelievable way. But as a leader, he also does a great job of listening to his staff. And I think as a staff, we do a great job of not giving into group think. It's easy when you have a guy who's second all time in National Coach of the Year trophies to whatever you say, coach, you know what I mean? But we do such a good job as a staff. Like we will meet as a staff. Everybody has a, a vote. Everybody has a say. We'll pitch out different ideas um, in terms of just like an action that JMU was running. We were talking about kind of five different ways of covering it. And then we kind of shrunk it down and then said, simplicity is best what are the two best ways so we walk through each of the different ways of doing it in practice and we come up with a couple different strategies to cover whether it's a ball screen whether it's a handoff um, different things like that so he does such a good job of empowering our staff to kind of come up with ideas he pushes back he's not afraid to push back on your idea can't just throw any idea up there but he does a really good job of kind of letting us give our voice but he has the final say when it's all said and done so it's a really cool trait to kind of see and one day I hope to kind of embody with the future staff and when it comes to player tendencies um, we'll meet and when it comes down to like what direction does this player like to drive is it left for pull up right to rim or is it vice versa is he a righty that most people say right handed people love to go right data, numbers, film will suggest it's different for each player. So those are those things that we'll make sure I try to be as detailed and specific in the paper scouting reports that we present and hand out. So, yeah.